Let's paint the walking corpse that is Belisarius Call, and I'm going to try to stay close to this piece of Blanchitsu artwork. So I'm using reds, oranges, yellows, and none of the cold colors that you often use to contrast these. I'm going to start with Brass Scorpion. So here I have Call spray painted black, and I'm going to dry brush all his metallic plates with this Brass Scorpion. It's really orangey metallic, but it's definitely not gold. So if you look at this from far away, it'll look like worn brass, old brass. And I think that's a good starting point as a base layer for all his metallics, at least his armor. And I'm just gonna do all of his metallics, all his appendages, even if I do the arms and the guns and so on later in a regular bolt gun metal, I'd rather have everything dry brushed like this so I can then make decisions on what to ch change, what I want to paint in different colors, then going back and having to dry brush this same color again. This just speeds everything up and it makes it easier for me to block in colors and then later on make decisions on what I really want to do. That's how I prefer to paint. So for now, everything that's metallic gets a dry brush of the brass scorpion. So look at that, nice, streaky, rough, kind of how the artwork looks. And now it's time for his cloak. And I'm going to take some Word Bearers Red, which is a pretty dark red, almost a burgundy. There's a little bit of blue in there. And we're gonna use that for his cloth. And again, I'm gonna dry brush and I'm going to make it quite rough. So here we go, all over his cloak. And it's fine if you leave relatively large shadows, leave parts of it black. We're gonna fill it out later. This is really just to block in the colors and see if this matches the idea I have in mind. So dry brush all of his cloth and try not to hit any of the metal because you're just gonna have to clean it up again. Okay, look at him now. You can see the dark red of his cloak. It contrasts nicely with the metallics of the armor. But I feel that the contrast is not going to be good enough when you look at it from a distance, when it's on the table. And the artwork is great and all, and I try to get close to it, but I also want to have this looking good from a distance. So I'm going to shade the metal a little bit with Athonian Camo Shade. And this is a very light green shade that's fairly dirty, and it will give the whole metal just a little bit of a green tint. Not too strong, because this wash just isn't that strong, but it will contrast a bit better with the red of the cloak. And it will just make the miniature pop a little bit more, and it also gives it the impression that it's a bit worn. It gives it a bit of grime, a bit of dirt, and I like my minis dirty and grimy. So I'm just gonna stick with the armor plates for now, not the guns and so. I'm gonna spend a bit more time thinking about what I want there. But this all, the armor plates, the body, that gets a little wash of Athonian camo shade. Like I said, it's very subtle with the shade, but it does help a little bit. It makes it slightly greener, especially in the recesses, and it makes it look a little bit dirty as well. It's not really the intention with this wash to make it look dirty. I got other stuff coming later for that. But hey, every little bit helps out. So now it's time for a little bit of a highlight. And I'm using Rune Lord Brass, to just dry brush everything from the top down. And this is much lighter and much whiter than the brass before, and it will make it just shine. And I'm doing this very lightly because I want bright highlights in very small areas so that the highlights really accentuate the edges. So no rough dry brushing here, really just try to get the edges done. So that gives a really light highlight and I'm gonna make it even brighter now with some silver. And with this silver, I'm just going to hit the tops of the model, just over here on that crest, just to make the highlight even brighter than it already is. I'm quite happy with the metal as it is now before I start griming it up. As you can see, I actually went quite a lot further with the silver and got bright highlights on the weapon, on the crest, literally every part of metal is shining really bright now. And that mimics the artwork that I'm showing here, the Blanchitsu style piece of art. It has very bright highlights and it has just a few tints, reds, browns, oranges. And for that, I'm gonna start dry brushing the cloak now. And I've got Jokero orange here, which is a, it's not a bright orange at all. It's weird, I don't know, muted orange. 
and I'll just dry brush that lightly all over the cloak uh, to get some highlights going and see how that works out and then I can figure out how I'm going to shade this down and dirty it and make it all blend in a bit more. And with the dry brush the cloak really got a lot more character. Take a look. It is not just highlighting, it's also making it look dirty and more worn and discolored and faded and that's the kind of look I'm liking on my minis. Now the cloak and the metallics are kind of getting close to where I want them to be so it's time to start adding some more details and one of the things is black. If you look at the artwork here there's a lot of black tendrils and stuff sticking out and this mini is lacking that. So I'm taking some uh, contrast black legion and I'm going to start painting all the hoses and parts that stick out with this contrast paint. And because it's contrast and I've hit these parts already with a bit of the metallics it will get into the recesses and it will really dull down those metallics but it will keep some of the highlight there. I think this is easier than painting it just black and starting over and highlighting them again. And let's see what the effect is. So some Black Legion and I'm using Black Legion rather than Black Templar because Black Legion is really black and Black Templar contrast paint has a bit of green in it. And I'm trying to avoid greens in this miniature because you know, the Blanchitsu style is warm tones. It's not cold tones. So you need your oranges, your reds, and your browns but not your greens and blues okay now the hoses are black and it's time to wash the cloth again because i want to make them look a little bit darker more dirty more brown so i got here a enamel wash dark brown for green vehicles by ak interactive and i'm just gonna wash all over the cloth over the cloak and the metals i do a little pin wash and the way you do that is you take a little bit of the wash and you just try to get it into the recesses and enamel washes are easy to work with they're just the same as acrylics except that you don't use water you use white spirits and if you've never worked with enamel paints before I'd recommend you watch my video about how to use streaking grime well, I'll link it here and in the description below it's very easy I know it's a little bit scary if you're just starting out but these paints are great because you can get some amazing effects with them. Really dirty, grimy miniatures. When you see those, they've probably used Streaking Grime or some other enamel wash. So for now, the whole cloak with this brown wash. And then while the wash is still wet, I'm getting some white spirits on my brush and I'm going to rub off the wash from the high part so that the highlights still remain highlights and you don't wash out all your highlights of these parts. And this is standard method of working with enamels that people often use to reduce the wash from the parts that you don't want to have you know, darkened down. And after this has dried, we'll see if it needs more grime, needs more dirt, maybe needs some dust, who knows. All right, the wash has done its work and the cloak is now looking more dirty, but at the same time, the dry brushed highlight is not so rough looking anymore. It's more blended in with the red, that's the base layer. Now it's time to work a little bit more on the guns. Uh, this big one over here on this side of him, on that side of him, and also the axe, because I want a little bit more color in there. A little more variety than just this brass that's now everywhere. And I wanna do the same with the armor. I wanna pick out little details, and I'm using Iron Warriors for that, which is a metallic. And I'm just going to pick different parts of the gun that I say are not brass, but uh, iron or steel. And I'm just going to pick out little details like this, see where it goes. Uh, I might add some copper or some other brass, or maybe some gold here and there, to just get a little bit more detail in these guns. Because it's a really detailed model, and it's a bit of a waste to not pick out these details on a big model like this. If this were just a Skitari, I might just leave the gun brass and be done with it. But for this guy, he deserves a little bit more attention. It's subtle, but it's there. You got a couple of gray parts here on the axe and I got all of the rings here. They're now more metallic. And I didn't want to make the difference too big because otherwise you just have this clearly defined parts of the weapon and of the mini. And with Planchitsu, everything kind of blends together. There's no clearly defined lines where one part starts and the other ends. So I'm gonna continue this and now with Hushoot Copper. And this is a very bright copper, so I'm gonna make sure I water it down a lot and then just take out little pieces on the model again. So let's say this little part over here, 
is going to be coppery. And if you dilute it enough, the copper isn't going to be so bright orange. And so it will blend in with the rest of the mini. And after this, you can still consider weathering it and bringing it more in line with the brass that we had before. But let's see how this ends up. Again, it's subtle, but it's there. Uh, over here, you got some copper, uh, these dials. I like these little pipes over there, some over here. I've painted all of them copper and they're quite bright now, but like I said, I'll dirty them down later on. This needs to dry, so in the meantime, I'm gonna start working on the parts that I want to have glowing. For example, this little spider over here, there's a couple of bulbs here on his back. There's some over here on the top. And let's see if we can give them a glow, but I want them to not glow so intensely because it all needs to be fairly muted. So I'm going to start with a bone color first and then uh, over that apply some contrast paints. The bone color will make it less bright than if you would use a white or the usual gray that you do with uh, contrast paints. So here I got some uh, flayed one flesh and I'm just going to give it one layer on all the parts that I want to have glowing. It's just a few spots, but let's see if this Griffhound orange contrast paint is gonna make it look like light. And I never liked this contrast paint, Griffhound orange, because it's really dull, it's not so bright. And now that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna use this Griffhound orange over here on the flay one flesh, see if we can get some kind of light effect going. And he has these bulbs here on his back that I do as well and one on the gun on the other side of the model too. And let's see what the result is once this is dry. Yeah, look, that's all right. Over here, you got a couple of lights on his back, a little bit on the gun and the little spider thingy up front. And I also did his face and one of his eyes in the same way. And just to be clear, this is a secondhand model. I wouldn't paint it in its hole like this if I had the choice. I would use sub-assemblies. I'd probably take off this thing in front of his face, these dendrites, all of that. So you have more access to the whole model and you can easily work without hitting other stuff. This is actually quite difficult. So now it's time for the servo skulls up there that I've kind of ignored and this one hand over here. That's the only bit of flesh that you can still see on Belisarius' skull on this model. And I also take the skull over there on his walking cane and make it into a real skull. Now I want them bright white uh, with a bit of smudge of brown on there. And if you want to paint white, don't start with white. Start with a light gray instead. So over here, I got gray sear and I'm going to add a layer of this onto the skulls first. And it might need two of these and then one or two of the whites to make them really bright. You know what? White is actually too bright. After doing a couple of layers of gray sear on the hand and on the skulls, I actually prefer this, I think. I don't want them to be too bright and stand out too much because these are details on the miniature, but they're not details of Belisarius' skull. Like his hand is, but the skulls aren't. So I don't want to draw too much attention there. I'm already now, as I'm painting, looking at these bright orange lamps all over. I kind of feel like they're drawing the attention away from the real part of the model where I want people to look at the face, the guns, the weapons, the axe. So maybe I'll have to darken them down a little bit later on, maybe add a wash or something. But first let's do the hand and I'm just going to lightly wash it with Karlberg Crimson just to give it a little bit of, I don't know, blood coming back in there, even though, you know, it's pretty much a walking corpse as far as the flesh part goes. Okay, he got a little bit of life back in that hand over there and it's still a bit bright pinkish but that's because it's not dry yet and after this I might dry brush with a little bit more gray sear to make those highlights pop a bit more and again make him look less less red over there. Now for the skulls I'm using a Rust Streaks uh, enamel wash because this is a nice brown um, that is darker brown than Streaking Grime. Streaking Grime has a green in it and I don't want those colors like I said before so I want brown washes and this brown I just want to experiment with it, see how it works on the gray sear. And after applying, I'll reduce it in the same way that I did with the cloak when I applied the brown wash over there. Okay, the skulls worked out really well. I don't know why I never tried this before, this combination of the gray and the rust streaks as a wash, but I might start doing all my skulls in this way because I really like the effect. Now. We're getting close to the end, but there's one thing that's really still missing, and that's details on the axe. If I look at the mini like this, 
in the way you're supposed to look at it, the axe is just a little bit boring. It's just a bright metallic part. Easiest fix would be a streak of blood and we'll get to that, but I want to get some more color and some more depth in there. So I'm taking the Carlberg Crimson again and I'm going to lightly shade a few parts of the X. And I'm just doing that by dropping a little drop of the Carlberg Crimson here and there. And it doesn't really make sense to have this red dirt on the axe or you know it doesn't rust this this brass and the iron parts don't rust carober crimson but with these blotches you get back to that artwork which was all streaky and it's not very detailed and this way you can still get some nice details on the axe that will work out well in the long run trust me now there's a bit more interesting detail on the weapon. Here you can see this quite a bit there. There's a few blotches here and there. And I went all through over the model and added a little bit here and there. So you get slight changes in how the metal reads. You got some more shading in there, some more interesting bits in there. Now it's still drying, so I need to do something else in the meantime. And I'm taking Balthasar Gold to paint a couple of details. For example, he has these keys over here. And let's make one of them Balthasar gold. And it's a, it's a rose gold, so it'll stand out from the rest of the metal, but it won't draw too much attention. If you would take a yellow gold like Retributor Armor, it would just really stand out. Now he has a couple of rings and bits and pieces on his hand that I'll also paint with this. Time for some blood and gore effects. Now what I got here is Zombie Gore and Vampire Thirst. And these are two paints from Duncan Rhodes' Painting Academy, the two thin coats line. And Vampire Thirst is basically just blood for the blood god, but Zombie Gore looks a bit darker and looks more like stale, already coagulating blood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the Zombie Gore, add that to the weapon here and there, get some bits and pieces covered in blood and then add the Vampire Thirst, the Blood for the Blood God, the fresh one, on top of that. That way you get the impression that there's some old blood on there and there's some fresh stuff as well. And I'm gonna use both of them with a dry brush to see if I can get some streaks on the axe and get some splatter on the rest of the model. So here with the Zombie Gore first, I'm just gonna streak like that, the way the axe would have swung if he took somebody out. There we go. And now some dripping down by stippling onto the axe and onto his arm even. Just imagine one big swing with the axe into whatever, greater demon or something. And what the result would be if you properly struck home with it. And once this is done, I need to leave it to dry and then I'll go over it with the vampire thirst with the brighter blood. Okay, the gore is still dripping off his axe, as you can see over here. But I'm going to start working on the bottom of the mini now with some Zandri dust. And I'm going to dry brush this in an upwards fashion to make it look like there's lots of dust on the fringes of his cloak. And I already know I'm going to do the base with Armageddon dust, which is the texture paste with the same color. So if I use this same color, Zandri dust now, to brush on some dust, it'll match what comes after. See, now the cloak looks dusty and dirty from being dragged along the ground. And I've done it all over on all sides and it looks even more worn now than it did before. And it's time for the basing material. I'm using Armageddon dust because that's the same color, like I said before. But there's one thing to keep in mind that I feel is important with Call with this model. See, he is moving in that direction. Call doesn't teleport onto the battlefield like this. So I want to see if I can make some trails behind him over here, especially where these cables are hanging out, to show the movement through the texture paste. So first I'm going to apply a layer. Then I'm going to try to score into it with the tool that I have and see if I can make something that makes it look like he has movement and he didn't just drop down onto this base. So I got this little metal tool and the Armageddon dust and... It's a little bit hard, so I'm gonna add some water and just bit by bit spread it out first, make a uh, very thin layer. And then after that, maybe put a layer on top and score into that. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. Okay, it didn't really work out how I imagined it. If you see here, you barely see any grooves in the Armageddon dust. It just doesn't go deep enough. And I think while drying, it just seeped back into the, the ridges that I drew in there. That's okay, 
I'm just going to continue. This is what happens with miniature painting. Sometimes it just doesn't work out the way you intended. I'm going to try and fix this in my way uh, by adding some more streaks of grime and maybe some oil and so on that's leaking from the mini. So it will still look as if he's been dragging this along and there's some, I don't know, oil leaks or stains coming out here behind him. That way you still get the impression that he has been walking on this base and it's not just planted right there, teleported into this position. So I'm starting with a dark brown wash uh, from AK and I'm just going to wash the whole base with this to give it some more depth. And then we go back with, I don't know, oil stains, fuel stains and all the like to get some more detail over here in the back to make it look like he's been dragging this along. All right, it's time to get creative. As you can see, he is washed now. He has the whole brown wash all over the base. And over here, I got four different washes from AK Interactive. I got engine oil and fuel stains. And over here, a panel liner for dark blue and gray uh, vehicles and exhaust wash. These two are black-ish. One is more bluish, one is more brownish. These two have pretty distinct brown colors. And I believe fuel stains dries up glossy. So there's a lot of variety here and I'm just gonna see what makes, what works, what I can do here. I'm going to draw streaks over here at the end of the base to make it look like there's stuff leaking out from under these robes. Maybe get a little bit over here so that it is, I don't know, showing leaking over there too. And if I find one of these four actually looks really good, I might add a little bit onto the model as well. You know, all these bits and pieces, all these hoses here, those connections, there's no way they're all perfect. So there must be some leaks over there. So if I see the opportunity to use some of these, I'll use it on the model too. I don't know what the result is going to be, but let's take a look. I'm going to start with the lightest of the three dark browns, not the few. So that's the engine oil. And I'm just going to try to draw streaks like this and try to taper them off. You know, the further away from Belisarius they are, the more they may have seeped into the soil. So it doesn't have to be all the same. And over here a little bit as well. And just drawing sort of squiggly lines coming from behind him. And I'm going to do the same with the others and see what the effect is. And I hope this works because I wouldn't know how to fix it except for just washing everything off with white spirits, which really isn't a bad fix if this doesn't work out. But let's just keep going, see how this works, and I'll show you the result. Now, after trying all four of these, I have to say really the only thing that matters is the panel liner. That's the black one. That's what these streaks really are. The others are just too light to see anything. The fuel stains add a little bit of interest, but they're not really necessary. Now, if you don't want to use enamels for this, you could have washed the base with just Agrax Earthshade and then use non-oil to create these streaks here. Because as you can see, it's just about making them a bit darker, a bit more black. And that's why the panel liner works best, because that one's actually blackish. A little bit of blue in there. So let's let this dry and then let's see the end result. There you go, Belisarius Cole in the style of John Blanche, or at least close enough, and at the same time looking good on the tabletop. Because artwork is very hard to mimic it on a miniature. You can't get the lighting the same way that a piece of art always has the correct lighting. But this worked out well, I think, and I think it would look good on a whole AdMac army. If you enjoyed this, you might want to check out one of my other AdMac painting videos, like this one here. 